Frankie Dettori, legend, world-class jockey, one of the best ever to sit in the saddle, ambassador to the sport of kings. Meet Frankie during his fanfare like never before, only on Pass the Wire TV. Thank you for visiting Pass the Wire TV, the YouTube channel of PassTheWire.com. Okay, everybody, uh, welcome to Pass the Wire TV. I am here with the, the, the legend himself, Frankie Dettori. Ciao, Frankie. Tutta posto. Tutta posto. Yes, that's posto. a good start. <laughs> so you, have, you, you haven't lost your Italian. That's good. No, no, no. I live in Florida a long time, but no, I, I, I don't. But I speak Napoli. And yeah, Napoli a lot Italian. of times people don't understand, you know, yeah, they true. speak proper Actually, Italian. And they look at me like, what did he say? You know? I, uh, I when I started, uh, I did three months in Naples when I was, uh, I, actually my first few rides were in Naples actually. Right. So I, I, I got to understand a little bit, but it's a completely right. different language. Yeah, I mean, no, even, exactly, exactly. So I grew up, my mom spoke it around the house all the time. So that's just how I, you know, how yeah. I speak. And, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, when I retire, well, I'm kind of retired already, but when I, I, I really, you know where I want to go? I see you, I see you. The what little island off the coast of Naples. Okay? Oh, I've never been. Uh, I've never been. It's beautiful. It's like a Sardinia that nobody figured out yet. You know what yeah. I mean? It's it's phenomenal. Yeah, I... um, let me let's get it get get into a couple of questions about about you. Okay. Hey. Fanfare. Now you don't notice what we decided to do. Why I wanted to reach out for you now is. On Pass the Wire, we decided we're going to write a series of articles this year. We've already done two or three of them about Frankie's fanfare, the final year, starting yeah. in Santa Anita, ending in the Breeders' Cup at Santa Anita. Uh, and we're going to follow you. I've got people in England, the people all over, all over the world ready to take pictures, write stories and articles. And of course, you started in the Detory way. Opening day at Santa Anita, winning the winning a bunch of races, you know, uh, country grammar, winning the state. Uh, we expect nothing less. All right. Thanks. Um, so luck. <laughs> uh, not quite, but we'll get to that. Let me ask you this: yeah. In American football, okay, we got sports legends like Tom Brady, Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers. They announce their retirement, <laughs> and then they miss it, and they wind up coming back next year. Is there any chance that we see Frankie riding next year again, or is this this is it? My heart wants to carry on. I'm not lying about it, but uh, you know, are you gonna face the facts? I will be 53 next December, and I want to stop at the top, you know. And uh, you know, this game is uh, you can go from uh, look at Ronaldo. You can go from playing one minute and be on the bench the next, right? Uh, I still have good horses to ride this year. So hopefully if I you know, stay in one piece and I uh, should be able to have a good season. And, and then I think it is just about the right time to call it a day. I mean, it can carry on if you want, but right. no, I understand. Uh, it, it, it was a difficult decision. Um, I had to put it to, first of all, to my mom and dad, and then to my wife and uh, yeah, we all, Communally, thought well, you know, is the right time. Uh, but you know, I, I, I'm the first one to tell to tell you that I, I will miss it so much, right? Uh, because, but you know, at the moment, I still feel strong enough and sharp enough that I can give, do myself justice to horses and the owners. So that's why, you know, I don't wait till I'm, you know, not, not, not strong enough or maybe not sharp enough. So. Uh, is is a very hard decision to do and to find the the right moment, but I feel if I'm gonna leave a legacy, I'm gonna finish at the top. If this year is my last, 
Is it hard? And, and you, you know, you are at the top of the sport right now and you have been for a long time, okay? And you're in the category of when people talk about the best riders ever in the history of the game, your name is, is, in, is in that conversation. Is it harder to step back when you're still at that level as opposed to when you're on the decline, which you're not, you're still at the top, but yet you're taking back. Is it harder to do it that way? It is hard. It is hard. I'm actually, I was on the phone with my wife now. She's planning uh, where to stay for Royal Ascot with them. She's going to bring all the children down. It is going to be a very emotional year. Right. Uh, it'd be a lot of crying. Trust me, I'm quite an emotional <laughs> person. You have to say the last goodbyes, you know what I mean, to, you know, the last Derby Royal Ascots. And I'll probably have to make back the trip back to Italy, to my homeland. And uh, yeah, it will be... It'd be fun. I'll try to enjoy as much as I can, but it is it's not, it's not easy. But right. I've, set, I've set my mind to it, and uh, I think it's, you know, it's, it's the right time. Okay. Um, one of the things that I've always noticed about you, okay, and, and I can't really think of another rider that I could say this about, okay, but you think of some of the best riders of all time, uh, Lester Piggott, Angel Cordero, uh, you, you know, guys like that, when you watch them ride, you could pretty much tell where they ride regularly. Like, I mean, you can tell Angela when you watch him ride, he was a New York rider. You can tell Lester Piggott was a UK rider. When you ride, okay, um, and I'll take Santa Anita now, uh, you look like you've been riding Santa Anita your entire career. When you go to Ascot, you look like you've been riding the UK. And there are subtle differences, the way, the way they seat, you know what I mean? The way they really drive and get down, the, you know, the, the last 16th of a mile. American riders sometimes look different than European. You look like, and you're the only guy that, you look like you've been riding in that place your entire career. How, how is it that you do that? How do you adapt so well to different countries and styles? Uh, I had great teachers along the way. Uh, as you know, I did four winters here in California when I was a teenager and I learned from the very best. I mean, the pool of jockeys when I was here in the late 80s was mind blowing, you know? I mean, I was there when Bill, Bill Shoemaker retired and obviously Lafitte, Teddy De La Ussis, Gary Stevens, Chris McCarron, Jerry Bailey. I mean, I, I probably missed another five or six. I mean, amazing. Right. And I learned, I, I was watching, you know, I was, you know, I actually, I was, I, I remember, I, I was, I used to sit next to Cordero, uh, sorry, uh, Fernando Toro, and then I used to uh -huh. watch Cordero coming over from New York. So I, uh, and when you're a younger teenager, you're a sponge, and I, I didn't want to look like the odd one out, so I tried my very best to look like an American rider, and trying to pick the best out of everyone, and uh, because physically we're all different, so I can't. Yeah. You know, I can't ride like part day because we're completely different, right. you know. So, so I, had to, I had to find my own style. And, uh, you know, it is, and, and, and you know, then you, you change and adapt. And Angel was, uh, he was the one that uh, he made me ride with the uh, toes in the iron because I used to ride European style with a full, full foot in. And right. so little, little things like that. My dad was a big good influence for me. Steve Corte, when I was a child, when there was a young jockey. So a lot of people influenced my style. And, uh, and I was, you know, obviously I started in Italy. I went to England. I went to America. Uh, you know, I, I, I rode all over the world. And, uh, and I, can, I like the challenge and I like to adapt to whatever I'm riding. You know, it's, it's funny. I, I, I look at your career and I can't find a country that they race horses in that you haven't won a race in. I mean, yeah. Macau, yeah. Slovakia, everywhere. South Africa, Sweden, Switzerland, every, everywhere. Um, Trinidad. And, yeah, Trinidad, Tobago, <laughs> yeah. Um, there's no country I could find where they race that, that, that you haven't won. Yeah. Interesting, this, to me, this is a very interesting question. You've ridden so many great horses. Okay, and you've had relationships with horses like the Enable, Stradivarius. That's recently. We could go back to De Lamy and you know, Dubai Millennium. So many great horses. What I want to ask you is, is there one horse 
that net that was really great that you knew but never got to show it because either they didn't get the breaks they didn't get the right course they didn't they got might have gotten injured but one that you knew wow this one's special but never really got to show it for one reason or another anybody come to mind has to be one no i mean honestly some you know obviously i wish golden Owl carried on as a four-year-old I wish the Bamilenio didn't break down, but you know, in fairness, they did show their true potential somewhere or another. I mean, to 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 me, the 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 one horse and I wish I rode in my life was Frankel. I mean, I raced with him in all his races, more or less, and I never seen a horse like it. I mean, it was, right. I mean, like you know, in comparison compared to Flightline this 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 last year. I mean, I mean, I don't think we've seen a horse like Flightline since you know everybody compared him to Secretariat. Right. And um, we wanted, wanted it to the Pacific Classic on the country grammar. And look right. what the country grammar can do, right? Right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, th- those kind of horses, I wish you know, I had the chance to ride it. But in fairness, all those that I've rode, I've been very lucky that uh, they're, they're some, somehow show their full potential in some of the races. Right. There's been so many big wins, Frankie. Is there, is there a race that comes to mind for you? that you feel that your talent, okay, that you, Frankie, you know, that one, I really made the difference. I did something or made the right move or, you know, got this horse home that might not have won a ride that to you sticks out as that's one of the ones I want people to remember. That's that's me at my best. Well, the first one that comes to mind, I guess, is Golden Order, the Agda Tree on Fire. A top draw, I think, it was 14 out of 16. And I just thought, you know, I, 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 when I spoke to John, I said, listen, I've got this idea. I want to stay wide of the field. And then I came across, I got a good, good slot. I mean, that, they, you know, it, it, it could have gone very wrong, but it went very right. right. Um, I mean, and also the, the jewel, then the fantastic light with Galileo in an island. When I slipped on the inside of the pacemaker, so there was a winning or losing move. But right. those are the the one I did right, but I did a lot wrong as well. Well, let me ask you this: Okay, if there's one you could have back, and I think I know which one it is. Uh, okay, no one. If there's one you could have back, who would it be? It'd be Swain and uh, that's, that's what I was going to say in the classic. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, you were young then. Um, and is, is that probably a race that you learned a lot from? Well, I think, uh, I got the, uh, the occasion got to me and, uh, basically I, I wasn't cool enough to handle the, the occasion. Uh, I was, what was I, uh, 28, 29. So, and I was doing it well, but right. You know, it was uh, it was a big learning curve to a point that I remember flying back to New York and I was crying that day in the plane with my wife. And yeah, it makes you, you know, he, he left a sour taste in my mouth, but you learn from it, you know, and, uh-huh. uh, and that's- And then I think we, the next no, year, no, you no. Won, the very next year yeah. you won the turf with Delami, I think, right? That might've been the next year, right? It was, yeah. And uh, I mean, nobody has a perfect career. So, right. you know, you've, well, got you've, to, come, you've yeah. come as close as, as yeah. Yeah. you got, you got to accept your mistakes and I did right. make a mistake and, uh, you know, I learned from it, you right. know, just try to stay cool under pressure. That's, that's what I've learned. Spe- so speaking of, of mistakes, let me ask you this. Is the Lester Piggott story true? The what, one where he was riding next to you and. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, no. so basically. <laughs> Uh, to, to the viewers that are watching this, um, uh, obviously I wrote for Lester when he was a trainer, and right. then he came back from retirement. And uh, you know, being cocky myself, I used to make jokes to him, and and anyway, I used to annoy him most of the time anyway. And mm-hmm. uh, so he, so he didn't. Yeah, I used to, he used to take it, but he never used to say much. And I think I think after a while, I probably was a bit annoying. And uh, it was it was a massive, it was a big field, twenty runners, and and basically we rode at uh, at uh, Goodwood, where I used to turn in most of the time. And 
and I glanced, it was on my left, and I took no notice because I was looking what was going on in front. And next minute, I, I he, he reached, he reached to my meat and two veg, and he gave him a good squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> and I do that. Ah! I was short of breath, and then uh, yeah, and then we pulled up, and he said, "Well, this will teach you a lesson for being cocky." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that, was, that's a good way to get taught a lesson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. Yeah, I didn't respect that. Trust me. <laughs> um. Wow, that's that's it's a funny story. I never knew if that was true or not. I had yeah, it was. Yeah. But, um. You know, ups and downs. You went through something when you were 29 years old. Okay, away from horse racing, you, you were involved in something that happens to very few people, a plane crash, so, you know, a friend survived. died, right, you survived. Um, does that, how did, how did that change you, Frankie, as a man, if it, if at all? What, 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 do you look back on that now at all? How did it change you? Oh, it's a trauma, you know, I was, 29 year old and a six months old son, just got married. Everything was going great. Uh, you know, I had the good horses and the good job and then that happened, you know, and I was, you know, it's tragedy that I lost my pilot, my good friend. Uh, I was lucky twice. I was lucky then I survived the crash and I was lucky that Ray Cochran, the other fellow jockeys who was right. next to me, managed to drag me out of the wreckage because I had a broken leg and right. the plane ex exploded. So I was lucky twice. It, it did change. For two years, I wasn't myself. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, I was asking myself some questions. Why did it happen to me? Uh, you know, what would it happen if I die? I mean, so many, you know, things. You know, your, your mind is, you know, I was lucky I had good fun. I didn't, I, sh I should have probably seen psychiatrist or help but you know I had a good family behind me and eventually I came through it and then he's you know he he may I'll be honest with you he probably may be a little bit more lazy but maybe enjoy life a bit more uh I was able to give my wife a bit more I was like tunnel vision 24 7 horse racing right I was I wasn't a very good husband or a very good father so I did change that, that, that changed me, that, that incident. And I become, I guess, more fun person. Like I said, maybe a little bit more lazy, but more time to, you know, family and whatever. So right. I, I, I would say if that didn't happen, I probably would have achieved more in my career, but then who cares? You know, life is only one life and I think I've done enough anyway. I don't know. I don't know that you could possibly achieve it in, in, in your, 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 your career. Uh, let me ask you this, couple, couple, couple more questions. I won't take much of your time. I appreciate you okay. coming on. Um, I always wonder this, and I know at the top level, it's fierce competition, okay? Yes. I think the ARC, the Derby, the Melbourne Cup, um, yes. maybe the Japan Cup are the toughest races to win, okay? My yes. opinion as a, as, as a, a student of the game. Is the riding tougher in any of those races? Like, where would you say is the roughest race riding in those big races? Like, like where it really gets rougher than anywhere else? Or is it at that level, it's just, it's, I know it's tough all over, but is there any place where, hey, I know this one, these guys ride rough, the Melbourne Cup or the Japan Cup. Like, where, where is the roughest place? Well, I think to me, the roughest race is the Epsom Derby. Okay. Uh, it is, I mean, it's ruthless, uh, you know, but then, then if you try to ride the Mayo and the Breeders' Cup, that's rough too. Right, <laughs> yeah. You have, right. you have to have eyes in the back of your head. So, right, no. Um, listen, when you get to the big stage, nobody's going to give you an inch. And right. the simple is that. And, uh, you know, they, uh, yeah, they're not, they don't walk in the parks. Uh, all, the, all the races that you mentioned, uh, if I have to single one out, it would be the Epsom Derby because it's usually a full field, uh, unexperienced three-year-olds going a mile and a half on a very tricky track. It is a, it takes, it is a challenge. It's a challenge. Um, now, what about the Kentucky Derby? How important is, is that the one that you really want this last year, um, if it works out? I mean, it's hard to even get in and get the right horse and everything's got to go right. Um, but listen, but, I, uh, 
I, I'm, I look, I'm, I'm having here, I'm going to spend two, two to three months here. And, uh, you know, as you've seen, I've had the decent start, so I'm enjoying it. It's a lot to, a lot's going to unfold in the next few weeks. And who knows, if I land in a decent thrills and start winning the derby trial, the derby, as you call it, trials, right. and, and who knows, I might, I might just uh, stay back and, and roll the dice, you know? Right. I'm, 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 I'm taking nothing for granted. You know, there is a possibility, but right. there's also this disability that nothing will come up. But, right. you know, I, I, I'm here now and, uh, right. you know, I'm, I'll see what the future brings. I mean, you almost won one of the preps last weekend. Newgrange almost yes. got up. I mean, he ran a, a huge race. Um, yes. Surprised a lot of people that he 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 ran that way. So you you know you never know. Long way to go to the Derby, as as hey. you know. Um, exactly. What are you looking forward to after after it's all over after the Breeders' Cup? And I'm a gambling man. I'm going to bet you're going to win a Breeders' Cup race this year and go out like that with a flying dismount. It's going to happen. I'm I don't, I don't know which race, but you're going to get one. You're going to get one. Uh, what What are you looking forward to afterwards? How about How about being able to eat whatever you want, whenever you want? We love to eat. Uh, yes, yes, we do that. We do that. Uh -huh. I, I would say um, it, it'd be a very uh, kind of difficult period i would say uh but then obviously it's my birthday in december is christmas and new year it will, it'll take a bit of a while to adjust uh, i will I've, I've got i will be uh, uh broke you know work on tv as a commentator when i when i uh, when i retire uh, right. but th but that would not be till the spring right. and and that's what I'm, I'm planning to do I'm planning to go in broadcast and that way will keep me involved in the sport and you know and to talk about my sport I find it right nice and easy okay yeah no, I'm, you're I'm not and I'm you're not good at it you're good at it you're natural you're natural you'll be great at it you'll be you will. I mean I mean I, everybody asks me if I want to train. I, I, don't, I haven't got the patience to be a trainer, I'll be honest right. with you. I mean, I, I like the idea of it, but I'll probably do two weeks and I'll pack it in. So Yeah, and, you, and, I, and I don't blame you. You'd be going from, you know, one life to the next of no time. You know what I mean? I yeah, mean, it's 24-7 yeah. when you train, just like what you do now. People don't realize how tough your schedule is, especially someone like yourself who rides literally all over the world all year long, right? I mean, yeah, you got to have yeah. a lot of frequent flyer miles. Did you, <laughs> buy, did you buy a plane yet? You should have your own plane. <laughs> I should. Yeah, all, the money have, I, yeah. all the money I spend on flights, I should have yeah. got my own you plane. Should, you should have your own, 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 own plane. Um, any... What, what, what's your physical regimen like? How do you stay? And I mean, you're riding, you're in your 50s, you're riding against guys in their 20s, okay? That's yeah. not easy to do. It's a very physical game. We know that, okay? The mental thing, okay, I get it. But how do you stay in shape? What's your regimen like? What do you, what do, you do? For uh, I'll be honest, this last 15 years, I've been training almost every day. Like you said, I have to, you know, because I got to keep up with the young guys, you know, uh, you got to keep your body tall. Look at Mike. Mike is an example. Amazing. I mean, he trains right. every day. I mean, look, you know, if I don't train seven days a week, it'll be at least five. But I have to because when you get to my age, you, you, I mean, the fitness goes away quickly. Uh, I do that. Uh, luckily, I always had the Mediterranean diet. Uh, so that helped. Uh, you know, we're very lucky in this last. 15 years, we're nutritionists, we know what to eat, everything is written in the packet. I mean, when I first started, uh, we, we just, you know, we just had a sandwich and, and, a, and, and a beer and we thought that was not fine, but it's obviously not. Now we know exactly what we can eat, what we can't eat. Um, yes, it's been, a, the thing is you have to embrace it. It's, it's part of your life, you know. Uh, I, I can't remember the last time I had a burger, I mean, you kind of train yourself to eat salad or chicken or fish or right. you, 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 it becomes part of the routine. I'll be honest with you. But what about macaroni pasta? You got to eat that once in a while. Never. No. Well, like you said, once in a while. Right. Yeah. Very, very much so. Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I guess, uh, by the way, I can, I can make a decent matriciana anyway. So. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so can I, I cook in, in, in the house. What of my wife? I cook. Yeah. Um, 
any any and i'm going to end it with this okay we ended this with this question you whether you like it or not are really you have evolved into not only a star in the sport you're an ambassador of the sport you're one of the faces of the game uh people look to you you know you're a leader in the game is that added pressure on you do you feel that when you go out and ride you have to perform you ride a lot of well-known horses um a lot of eyes are on you is that an added pressure thing how do you deal with that pressure uh listen i'm i i'm human like everybody else i do feel nervous I do get a dry mouth, you know. I think if you lose that, is where you don't care anymore. And, you know, I came to Santa Anita, all the eyes were on me. Of course, I felt it. And I'd be lying to say that I didn't. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it can be a good thing or a bad thing, but, you know, I had a great start and it was amazing, you know. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's kind of, you know, I, I, like, of course, I'm representing Frankie Di Tori, but I'm actually representing Europe, basically. And, right. and I feel responsible of that, you know, um, that, that I have to uh, ride well for the sake of my, my continent. So there, there is an extra pressure, but, you know, pressure is good. You can handle it. You used to it by now. Right, we eat pressure for breakfast around here, so <laughs> it's all good. Um, I'll just say precious, precious for tires, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that, that's true. Frankie, we wish you the best. Thank you so much for coming on. Can I get a shout out for somebody special out there? Yeah, listen, a uh, big shout out for Blondie, your wife. Then I heard she watched my documentary and she really liked it. So thumbs up, Blondie. Take care. Thank you. I'm going to shut this off. We say goodbye off camera. And uh, ciao, Frankie. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Tracking trips with Pick 6 King, John Stetton. It's one of the best tools in horse racing for any level of player. It's your second set of eyes, spotting troubled trips, betting angles, track trends, horses to watch and favorites to fade, 10 figs, ticket structure, and more. At Tracking Trips, you're a friend with benefits. Not a member? You must hate winning money. Join Tracking Trips now. Visit pastthewire.com and we'll see you in the winner's circle. Remember, nobody does it better. Gentlemen, here with some exciting news. The RF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator exclusively on DRF Bets. History remembers moments of extraordinary strength, skill, and determination. True greatness is forged by those who fulfill their destiny.
nobody does it better.